Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brian David. I'm the uh, program director for Go Virginia Region 3. And I'm uh, joined this morning with uh, Jeff Reed from Virginia's Growth Alliance, as well as Linda, Jeff Reed, excuse me, uh, I've got, and Linda Green uh, from uh, Southern Virginia Regional Alliance. Um, let me uh, ask each of one, Jeff, introduce yourself and then and Linda uh, as well. Good morning, I'm Jeff Reed, the Executive Director of Virginia's Growth Alliance, and I have been in this role for about seven years. And thank you for having us this morning, Brian. Good. Just real quick, Jeff, your, uh, the Virginia Growth Alliance covers what part of the, the Southern Virginia? The, the um, we cover about 4,400 square miles of South Central Virginia. Um, it's Mecklenburg, Brunswick, Greensville, the city of Emporia, Lunenburg, Charlotte, um, Cumberland, and Prince Edward counties. Um, and this project also includes Buckingham, Nottaway, and Amelia counties okay. um, in that as well. Good, good. And I forgot we were uh, here introducing the Bridge to Recovery uh, program, which we'll get into in, in, in just a bit. Now, Linda, uh, just give us a little bit about yourself and who you're representing. Please. Absolutely. Um, I represent the Southern Virginia Regional Alliance, which joins Jeff's territory to the west. So we cover the areas that pick up in Halifax County, cover, cover, cover Danville and Pennsylvania, Martinsville Henry area or in the marketing region, as well as Patrick County. So from the Blue Ridge Mountains, just working our way down 58 in the Dan River, straight into Clarksville, into Jeff's area. Um, this is an area that I've lived in all my life. I've worked across the state, federal, state, and local positions, and now have the pleasure to work in economic development at a regional level with this area, um, and have worked with Jeff for many years and enjoyed the relationship. Oh, good, good. It's all you, Linda. <laughs> well, and I think I think their relationship will certainly uh, uh, tie into to this project and what we're. Go Virginia and, and these two regional economic development groups are, are, are beginning the implementation of. And, and real quick, you know, th this area where the sun kind of rises on Brunswick County and arcs uh, through the, the northern part of, of, of uh, the region and sets in Patrick County is, is a log, large geography. And so uh, these two organizations uh, are really trying to promote in, in a unified way economic development. Uh, activities uh, to, to create quality and good paying jobs for, for people. So with, with that as a preamble, uh, let's kind of jump into these questions. Uh, you all have been able to do a little studying because I, 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 we did, this is not a gotcha kind of thing. So um, tell us a little bit about how the idea for this project, the Bridge to Recovery came to life. You know, what, what gave it, what gave it some life, so to speak, for you all to pursue it? Um. Certainly. I'll start. Southern Virginia Regional Alliance started a task force in March of this year when the COVID condition we had hoped would be very temporary and immediate. We felt that we needed to immediately come together and address how localities could partner, team, and collaborate to better handle the issues that were coming from our businesses and industry. Um, Jeff and I had multiple conversations about what we were doing. And while we started a COVID task force that included chambers and economic development, we talked about ways that we could cooperate and work together. And um, there was a lot of symbiotic relationships and needs across the region. Go Virginia also was a very, very, um, appropriate partner because Go Virginia actually reached out to us to let us know that they had COVID-19 funding and were trying to assist businesses. So Jeff and I got very involved in what can we do to best help through this situation. And I'll let Jeff pick up from there. Oh, well, thank you. You were doing fine, Linda. <laughs> um, so from there, um, we started, um, kicking around different ideas on how we might be able to take advantage of some of the temporary changes that were made um, for funding for Go Virginia Region 3 funds and um, looking at um, ways that 
we could really get the money into the hands of our businesses. That was the most critical thing for Linda and I in every conversation we had um, is that we didn't want to see anything that was developing a study or looking at issues or, um, you know, going to government entities or anything like that. We wanted all of, as much of the funds as we could possibly get um, into the hands of our local businesses and industry. Uh, so with that um, came lots of conversations with the HCD. Um, Liz Povar was a critical ally in helping us get this all pulled together. Um, and lots of back and forth on how we want to make this work because you know, to, to um, DHCD's credit and to um, the Go Virginia um, State Council's credit, they were trying to do something that really didn't fit their mandate and, and be creative in how they could use some of these funds. And um, they liked the concept. They liked the, um, the fact that two regions were working together um, and I think everyone wanted to see the application succeed. And so we worked to that end. And um, that's kind of where we are today. Um, Linda did a great job of um, setting up a template that I'm now trying to replicate on my part of the region. We're a couple months behind uh, Linda um, because we got started a little later. Um, so, you know, we're, I, we're not really playing catch up, but we are um, trying to, um, get everybody on the same page. And so that's kind of where we are today. Good, good. And Brian, if I could add, yes. one of the things that we did is we rolled this out. Jeff and I compared notes, what's working, what we're doing in our areas. So we set up weekly COVID task force calls with chambers and economic development offices. Uh, we involved Cassidy Rasnick from the Deputy Secretary of Commerce and Trade, who was working on the business side of the recovery plan for the state as well as Todd Haymore, who was the former Secretary of Commerce and Trade, but from this region, from Southern Virginia. Um, that gave us a legal firm perspective, a state perspective, in addition to all of our local players. And when we started to do this rollout, rather than duplicate efforts, if one chamber had a webinar coming out, they shared with others. We immediately opened up so that as things were happening, if Jeff's area wanted to participate, we let him know. He can see on our website everything that we are doing, and we're trying not to duplicate resources during a time of crisis. Sure. Um, so it's been an extremely valuable to us, and Go Virginia and DHCD have been able players. Sarah Dunnigan was phenomenal, as Jeff said, in those initial days when we realized that they couldn't fund directly to businesses, we brainstormed a model that worked through supply chains and a way to actually fund suppliers in our region. And we had predicted that we would have by up to 30 signed on as pre-qualified suppliers by the end of the first two years. We already have over 60. So, wow. Um, it, it's been phenomenal what the cooperative effort has accomplished thus far. Great. And that gives kind of this, this idea that you all had a sense of urgency about this. Uh, just so we, we get, uh, sometimes we get into the acronyms uh, world, and, and I'm guilty of it uh, a lot too. Uh, GO Virginia stands for Growth and Opportunity Virginia. It's a state program that was stood up several years ago. The Department of Housing and Community Development uh, which Sarah Dunnigan is the associate director oversees that is there is the state kind of level above go Virginia that helps um, review these grant applications and, and administers the program in conjunction with region three. The last thing that I'll say is that the state board back in the spring back when the pandemic was just um, in April was was getting to you know the, the economy was 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 crashing wanted to take a, 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 a good sizable amount of funds and try to get them in the economy as quickly as possible. And so that is really where you all stepped up and were able to take advantage of this, these funds that were trying to be rapidly 
uh, uh, transferred, dispersed out to private business, but it took some, some nimbleness to be able to make sure that the public dollars were, were transparent and that we, we met all the, the rules and regulations about using uh, the, the taxpayers' money and, and that's all, be, all being abided by. Which lets me get into the next question. Let's get down into this is a nuts and bolts thing, but I think those that may be watching this video will be real interested in particularly private businesses and that the Chambers of Commerce have been very good partners in all of this to you because of their relationship uh, with the business community through Southern Virginia. So with that, how would you all describe the process of applying for two, two things that this grant program will do for private business? To become a COVID-19 supply chain uh, assistance, meaning the direct cash match part of it, or to become a pre-qualified supplier. So let me repeat that. There's a COVID-19 supply chain assistance, and then there's a pre-qualified supplier. So give us an idea of how, how you go about applying for that and what that all means. Absolutely. I'll take the um, supplier part, and Linda, you can handle the grant part. Does that sure? Does that work? That's absolutely good. Um, or the the cash match part. Um, the the process for uh, becoming uh, a preferred vendor on our list is extremely simple. Um, all you need to do is go to um, our website and click on the supplied vendor um, form, fill it out, and it, it comes to us, and then it's reviewed, and um, you're either approved or not. It's, it's very simple, very straightforward. Um, we are looking for um, specific types of vendors, but it's not necessarily limited to that that list. So um, if you're an accountant, um, an attorney, um, an HR staffing firm, um, a cleaning firm, a construction firm, an architect, um, you know, social media expert, web designer, um, just about any business support thing that you can, um, support service that you can think of, we want on this list because we don't know what all our businesses need um, for assistance. And so we're trying to be inclusive rather than exclusive. So um, the, the list is there, but there's also an other category that you can click on if you supply a different service. And so, um, as Linda said, we um, had hoped to have a few people signed up um, at the end of two years. Uh, we're double that already in, in two months. Uh, and, and now we're trying to get the next phase of that started where um, we get these services in the hands of the businesses that need them. And I'll let Linda take over that part of the question. Sure. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And Jeff did a great job of the lead in. Um, it is a simple process. Um, the application itself does specify that these are services for COVID-19. So, we do ask them what their certifications are, um, you know, if, if they have within their association a governing body, we want to make sure that we do screen those criteria to make sure that we're putting the best suppliers out there. And there is a criteria for the selection process that we go through that does monitor have they worked with COVID-19 issues. Um, do they have that expertise in-house and can they take it forward? And that's about the only additional qualifier beyond what Jeff has mentioned. Um, with that list, we've worked directly with a website. So we have a Go Virginia Region 3 Bridge to Recovery. Um, the link is SOVA Bridge to Recovery for Southern Virginia Bridge to Recovery.com. Um, so people can go directly on that, get to Jeff's site, to my site, where there are a lot of other resources for them. But that general page we use together and all the suppliers and that database are going to be added to that central area so that people can get to them. Our idea, and I remember Jeff in the early days saying, it's important that these funds go out into our economy. Uh, we both talked about how um, there may not be a return to norm if we didn't step in and help the companies quick. They're in trouble today. We can't wait a year from now or study this. We have to make a difference. Go Virginia 
was incredibly good both at a regional and state level of helping us structure this in a way that did conform to their policies and requirements. So with the preferred suppliers, this gave us a link of suppliers that our companies could turn to quickly. So that was the first step. Then it was the request for assistance. So a request for assistance form is equally easy and that also can be accessed online on our website. So again, it's sovabridgetorecovery.com and when you get there, both forms, um, it's just a click for assistance. One, the COVID-19 assistance or the second, as Jeff explained, the pre-qualified supplier. The COVID-19 assistance forms, they do have to show the need. So we, we ask them if they've received funding from any other source. We don't duplicate other sources of funding, but we do work directly with other funders. It may be that they received some funding, but not enough to complete what their need was. Um, these needs, as the supplier list indicated, are aligned for COVID-19 emergency needs, things that companies were required to do um, to make it through this pandemic or that they've been forced to do to, for the safety of their employees. So we have two different classifications there. The one is professional services. So any of the professional services related to their COVID need, and Jeff did a great job of highlighting those, but if you're putting in responses to the Department of Labor and Industries requirements in the Dulley Emergency Act requirements, as you respond to those, you may need an HR professional to write that pandemic plan. Um, so any of those things that you're doing that were totally unexpected and taking money out of your pocket, you can apply to have a professional help you with those. Um, it also helps with PPE supplies and equipment for those people who had to put up plexiglass dividers who are redoing their process line to produce masks or gowns. Um, there's funding available to them. So all of that you fill out on that form. Then we go through a criterion selection with the local partners. So we work back with the local communities to review those and then give a quick response with there are suppliers that meet your need in our network. Once approved, that company would pay one half of the cost. So there is a match to them, but they would get a match to that. They would pay one half of the cost that would go through our program. And then our program pays the supplier the other half of the cost. So um, this is to quickly and effectively solve some of the needs of our local businesses and put money in our suppliers' hands for working with them on these solutions. Good. So if I understand the way that this, this works, as you've explained it, these are, are for expenses that businesses are going to have to incur because of some government regulation. Absolutely. Whether, that, whether that's state or federal, it doesn't, that's immaterial. It's, they have to do it for the protection of their, their employees, their protection of their customers. And this isn't a reimbursement. It's, it's that they need, these are things that they will expend money on. So I want to draw that distinction. So, you know, if, if businesses have set up, stepped up for sure to do the, the things that they needed to do, uh, as we know, things wear out things have to be replaced. And so kind of keep in mind, this is yet a, a good opportunity for replacement or to do things that you already did maybe better, right? Is that Absolutely. And the other thing that we hope it adds as a service and benefit to them, Brian, is they can actually work with us. We'll build the contract with the suppliers. They don't have to deal with any of that. Um, they tell us what they need, what their needs are, and we'll put them in contact with qualified suppliers and help build a contract between us and the supplier. So we hope this is helping them with the service side of that as well. Good. And, and the other thing it does too, yeah. Brian, and, uh, um, and this was, again, a critical conversation that, that Linda and I were having with this. Um, as some of our existing industries pivot to start making PPE and respond to the, the crisis, um, some of them are doing that, or, and many of them are doing that to stay alive and to stay afloat. 
um, because they can't do whatever their product was before or the demand is lessened. Um, so not only are we helping um, a, a local business get their gloves or their mask or their gowns or whatever, but we're also putting money in the hands of a company who is manufacturing that in Southern Virginia um, and, and bringing that to the market. Um, so we're connecting those suppliers with those people who need the supplies. And I think that's an important thing to, to remember about this project because, you know, it, it doesn't do us any good, if you will, um, to help our local businesses who need the PPE or the professional services to survive if the people who provide the PPE and the professional services can't survive because they don't have the customers. So by connecting those um, and building the bridge, if you will, um, you know, we're, we're helping both sides of the economy. Great, great. And, and we will have uh, all the, the, the uh, URLs, the, the, the addresses for all the information, um, certainly uh, Go Virginia and each one of the organizations, but Bridge to Recovery has its own website and it's active, it's live, it's, it's there. Um, uh, Jeff, you, you, you really started kind of down this road and I want to pick up on it. Um, we've now covered, you know, what the, how this thing came to be why it came, where the money's coming from, where does it need to go, and how do you go through, in a brief overview, the mechanics of it, as Linda said, it, simplicity is, is, is the rule that was built in, baked into the, to the process. But Jeff, you touched on it, and certainly uh, have an opportunity to continue, and Linda, you know, this is gonna have an economic impact in Southern Virginia, and it's trying to kind of keep these dollars within the, the economy of Southern Virginia to keep people employed. What's your vision? I mean, did you all have this vision when you started down the road? Has it evolved? Has it changed? Uh, or does it stay the same? Give, give us an idea of your vision of the economic impact. I think the answer to all those questions are yes. Um, you know, when, when we started this project uh, initially, and, and Linda had um, conversations prior to, to me having conversations with um, some of my local industry. Um, you know, we were hearing from our manufacturers um, that they're, they were having trouble getting X, whatever it might be, um, that their, their supply chain may have been interrupted, or um, they um, are having to stagger their shifts to keep their workers going, which is something they hadn't done or hadn't planned to do, didn't know how to do. Um, or the company was pivoting to, to make some of these supplies and they had no idea what the legal ramifications might be. If you know, you've made widgets for 20 years and all of a sudden you're making masks um, and you're, you're promoting these masks as, um, as an appropriate deterrent for the um, pandemic and it turned out that they weren't, are there legal issues there for you if you did that? Um, and so we felt it was important to try to put together a depository, if you will, of people that could answer those questions. Um, at the same time, um, we felt it was important um, for the long-term benefit of our regional economy. Um, if there is a way for that widget company to get their supplies from someone, you know, 20 miles away, as opposed to half a world away, um, we needed to bring them together and hopefully form a long-term relationship um, between those two companies. Um, so, so that part has always been part of the vision um, as, as, as that reshoring, if you will, it's a term that is overused these days, but, um, but to connect our, our local economies as much as we possibly can with local suppliers. Um, the other thing that we had going on um, that were unintended consequences of all this, um, you know, our restaurants were closing down, our hotels were closing down. Um, so we were bringing people into the region to 
remanufacture or re-engineer um, manufacturing lines, but they didn't have a hotel room to stay in or a place they could even go get a meal. Um, so there was just this domino effect of things going on. Um, and, and we were just really trying to figure out a way to help our businesses um, from Main Street to the industrial parks stay afloat. And um, so that's kind of what we're doing. The long-term goal, I think, um, are for the first time in my 20 years, I'm not a lifelong resident like Linda, but I've been here 20 plus years uh, in Southern Virginia, is that we have a whole bunch of people sitting around at the table and working together that have never done that. Um, and if we can continue that process, which is what we're hoping will happen, um, and that we have you know, our 14 or 15 or 16 chambers of commerce working together, um, if we have our, all of our lo regional, local economic development people working together, and, and then we have our, our manufacturing and our supplying people working together, um, that's a win-win for everybody involved. And that's ultimately what we hope happens is that this starts, but it doesn't end um, in two years when the, when the grant program is over. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you, you and, and quite kind of a, an encompassing of the here and now, as well as the future and that the, this grant program is, is 18 months to two years in duration. Uh, Linda, just give us a, an idea of what, what you think are some of the, the quick takeaways that you've experienced the impact of this program just in a few months that it's been, been up and running. Absolutely. And I completely agree with the anecdotal explanations that Jeff just gave. I mean, our fear was we're trying to attract key se industry sectors and maintain key industry clusters in our area. If our main streets are rolling up the carpets and there, there aren't good economies in our towns and cities, then we can't attract industry and we can't retain the industries that we have. So we put some metrics along with Go Virginia team, Jeff and I put some, some metrics to our goals. So our goal clearly was to help them sustain and recover from the pandemic and to set up a system that helped us in future pandemics, God forbid that should happen. Um, but we also put metrics to it. So we looked on each application at how many jobs they had pre-COVID. So what was your job count pre-COVID? And then our goal is to get them to that level and above by the end of this recovery period. So it was very specific that we wanted to help create and sustain jobs for our companies that were adding PPE production did other people in our area know they were doing it? So maybe they geared up for a government contract, but maybe there are 10 other companies in our area that could benefit from purchasing from them, but don't know about the transition. So it was the communication piece. So we added metrics to how many people we communicate to. Do we help change revenue pictures for companies? So we're actually asking, what was your 2019 revenue on your tax return? And will you agree to share with us over the next two years that revenue number so that we can see, did we make a difference to your bottom line? Um, and we've had companies come forward who have shifted lines completely to PPE production. Those numbers are important to them. It may not be that they will always do that, but it's sustaining them through a very difficult timeline. And that was part of our goal. Um, so we're measuring capital investment. Did they change their processes? Did they modify it? Did they have to put in additional distance in between employees and add on to their facilities? So what are the capital investment requirements and what are the payoffs and revenue? So very hardcore numbers to go with our anecdotal stories. Sure, and, and, and that then points, you know, from the anecdotal of, of, as Jeff talked about it, and you, Linda, said that there is a measurement, there is accountability with these dollars, and we really want to, to learn from businesses. Certainly everything with revenues all held in confidence. This is not 
uh, something that that that, that uh, goes beyond though the principles at, at, and Jeff and Linda's uh, group are, are working on. So we're getting close to the end here on on our my interview <laughs> of you two about Bridge to Recovery, and so I'm I'm going to end with a test. All right. Sure. If you had some advice to give to anybody considering to apply either a supply chain or a, a cash match recipient, what that what would that advice be in five words or less? For me, it would be don't hesitate. Apply now. Um, this is here for emergency purposes, so go. Good, good. Jeff? Yeah, I was going to say almost exactly the same thing, so I will just um, modify mine to say, you know, Time is running out, um, so um, get your application in. Good, good. Well, those are great words. Uh, I uh, I feel certainly if 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 I needed to know more, go to the website uh, Bridge to Recovery uh, and 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 learn more. And these two economic development professionals will certainly uh, help and and be responsive because, as they said. This is about nimble. This is about quick, and, and certainly the relationship and, and 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 just the sharing with these two, I think, could build into future relationships with the business community, and that's what uh, both of these groups are about: are, are creating a, a prosperous and helping with the resiliency of Southern Virginia, because Southern Virginia is a very resilient place. So, with that, I do appreciate you all's time, and. Uh, Probably the next project we all work on together will come to a video near you soon. So thank you all. Thank, thank you, you Brian. Brian.